Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture series on the subject botany. Today our topic is taxonomy and diversity of astraceae. We all know about the various types of plants such as sunflower, dahlia, daisy, etc. All these plants decorate our gardens and parks. These plants, whether they are sunflower or dahlia, all belong to a single botanical family scientifically called as astraceae. The astraceae is commonly known as composite family. The term aster on which is based the family name refers to the star-shaped inflorescence in the type genus aster and it is named as composite family. The word composite has been derived from the Latin word compositus which refers to the densely clustered groups of flowers that are characteristic of the family astraceae. So the uniqueness of the family astraceae is that what first seems to be a single large flower is actually a composite of many small flowers called florets. The family astraceae was first of all established as a formal taxonomic category under the name Compositi by Jeski way back in 1792. However, later on astraceae as an alternate family name was given by Brechtold and Pressel in 1820. This alternate name of astraceae was necessitated due to the typification rule of International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. But at the same time, compositi as a family name was also conserved. Compositi was also retained due to its very earlier usage. The family members of the family astraceae are distinctive. They are unique in having their inflorescence as a head, technically called as capitulum. This head is subtended by a bracket whorl called as involucre. These heads comprise of a central disc floret and the peripheral ray florets. Here, in the case of family astraceae, the androsium is syngenesuous and the ovary is inferior with a single basal ovule. And lastly, the fruit is an akeen called as Sipsila. After this brief introduction of the family astraceae, in today's lecture, we are going to deal with the following aspects of the family astraceae in detail. These are number one, taxonomy, number second, systematic position, number third, phylogeny, number fourth, diversity, and fifth, the economic importance of astraceae. So starting with taxonomy. When we talk about the habit of astraceae family, its members are either annual or perennial herbs, or sometimes they can be even shrubs. Or very infrequently, we see the astraceous taxa, they can be even trees. Example is Vernonia or Borea or very rarely they can be even vines. The example here is Mycania micrantha. In case of perennial herbs, they are often associated with tubers. These tubers store a carbohydrate by the name of anulin. Here in the case of astraceae plants, they are always associated with latticifers or resin ducts. Also, we have the presence of polyacetylenes and terpenoid aromatic oils. These are mostly cisco-terpene lactunes. A characteristic feature of astraceae is that they lack iridoids. Now root. As astraceae belongs to the dicots, here the root is a tap root system. Now sitem. Stem is usually hairy. The hairs are diverse. 
they can be simple or they can be even branched. When branched, they assume various shapes. Now the important character that is the leaves. The leaves are usually alternate and spiral. Rarely they can be opposed. Example here is Dahlia. Mostly the leaves are extupulate, that means without stipules. The leaves are usually simple, but they can be sometimes deeply lobed or dissected, as we see in the case of Artemisia. The leaf margin is entire or it can be toothed. And the veneation in the case of leaves here is either pinnate or palmate. Now the inflorescence. Inflorescence here in Astraci can be either terminal or axillary. Here one or more heads, as already mentioned, they are called as capitulum. They are arranged in a determinate secondary inflorescences. Each head consists of a flat to conical compound receptacle that bears on one extreme a single head as we see in the case of Echinopus to many flowers. The flowers develop usually centripetally and are subtended by one or more rows of brackets called phyleries. This row of brackets is collectively termed as involucre. Heads in the case of Astraci, they are broadly of five main types. Number one, discoid. In this type of head, we have only disc florets and all these disc florets are bisexual. The second type of head that we see in Astraci is called as discoform. Here we have only disc florets and also a mixture of pistillate or sterile florets. Also we can have bisexual or staminate florets either in the same head or in different heads. The third type of head in Astraci that we see is called as radiate. This is the most common type of head that we see in Astraci wherein we have a central bisexual or staminate disc florets and the peripheral pistillate or sterile ray florets. The fourth type of head is called as ligulate. Here we have all the florets in the form of ray florets. The fifth and the last type of head is called as bilabiate head wherein we have all the florets having a shape of bilabiate. Now the individual flower. The flower in the case of Astraci is epigynous. It is bisexual as we see in the case of disc florets or ray florets of a ligulate head or sometimes they can be unisexual as we see commonly in the case of ray florets in a ligulate head which may sometimes be even sterile. The flowers are actinomorphic when we take the case of disc florets or they can be zygomorphic if we take the case of ray florets. Each floret sometimes is subtended by a bracket known as chaff or bristles as we commonly see in thistles. Now the individual part of the flower starting with the outer world called as calyx. Calyx here is either absent or it can be modified into a structure called as pappus. This can be in the form of two or many persistent sepals. Sometimes these sepals can be conate. They can assume a shape of on, scale or bristles. These types of structures are hairy, example is suncus, capillary, Example is helianthus, barbed, what we see in bidens, or feathery. Example is cordus. Now the second world, what we call as carola. Carola here is comprised of five petals, and its condition is sympetalous. 
It is usually modified into three structural types within the family Astraceae. Number one, we call it as bilabiate. Here, the corolla is zygomorphic with a short tube having upper and lower lips, with usually two petals in upper lip and three petals in lower lip. The second type of corolla that we see in Astraceae is a disc where the corolla is actinomorphic with short to elongate tube bearing five teeth like lobes. The third type of corolla is called as ray or ligulate. Here the corolla is zygomorphic with generally short tube with a tongue like flat extinction bearing three to five apical teeth. After corolla now we discuss Androecium, the male part of the flower. It is comprised of stamens, which are usually five in number. These are whorled, alternipetalous, syngenesuous. Syngenesuous is a special feature that we see in Astraceae, wherein the filaments are free and the anthers are fused on the top. By this, they form a tube around the style. The androecium is also epipetalous. The anthers on the top of the stamens, they are basal fixed with apical or basal appendage. The anthers, they are intros and the dehiscence is longitudinal. The anthers are commonly tetrasuporangiate, but occasionally they can be also bisuporangiate. The pollen grains are characteristic here in the case of Astraceae, tricolporate. Now the female part of the flower gynoecium is comprised of two carpels and the condition is syncarpus. Ovary here is inferior and it is unilocular with a single ovule. This ovule is anatropous and unitagmic. Style is here solitary with apically two branches. The stigmas are two occurring as a stigmatic lines towards the inner surface of the style branch. Placentation is characteristically here basal. Also, the nectaries are usually present at the apex of the ovary. Now, the fruit. Fruit in case of Astraceae is called as akene, or more scientifically, technically, it is called as Sipsila. Sipsila is basically a type of akene which is derived from an inferior ovary. Fruit is always covered by a persistent pappus at its apex. Sometimes this fruit can be flattened, winged, or spiny. In some taxa, an elongate beak is formed between fruit and the pappus. The seed here is single, embryo is straight, and endosperm is scanty. That's why it is called as X albuminous. Now discussing its pollination system that we see in the case of Astraceae. The tiny florets of Astraceae are not readily apparent. In fact, the involucral heads usually appear to be a single flower. In case of radiate heads, ray florets, they serve to attract pollinators. And the central disc florets, they mature centripetally, usually the pollinators land on the ray florets on the outside and deposit pollen from other plants on the stigmas of marginal disc florets. The filaments of many Astraceae respond to touch by contracting abruptly to force the pollen out of the plunger mechanism and they get attached to the pollinator's body. The corolla color is usually highly variable in case of astraceous flowers. The inflorescences are generally outcrossing and attract a wide array of generalist pollinators such as butterflies, bees, flies, and beetles. Some genera in Astraceae have reduced flowers that are wind pollinated. Example here is Ambrosia. And even some have heads which have been reduced to a single flower. But these reduced heads are then secondarily aggregated 
into compound heads. The typical example here is echinops. Now, fruit dispersal. The echines, that is the cypsilla, fruit of the astracea of most members, are dispersed by wind because you have the pappus which functions here as a parachute. The flattened and often winged fruits, they assist in wind dispersal. The external transport on birds or mammals is facilitated by pappus modifications, such as the pappus can be modified into bobs, arms, or sometimes the fruit outgrowths like hooks or spines, or even the specialized involucral brackets. They help for the dispersal of fruits by birds or mammals. Now the second part of the lecture, that is the systematic position of the astracy. Various taxonomists have classified astracy differently. We will just mention here the prominent ones, starting with the two British botanists by the name of Bentham and Hooker, who classified the family astracy under the class Dicotyledons, subclass Gamopetali, series Inferi, and the order Astrates. Arthur Cronquist, an American taxonomist, divided this family Astracy under the division Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, subclass Asturidae, and the order Asturates. Armand Takhtajan, a famous Russian taxonomist, classified Astracy under the division Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, subclass Asturidae, superorder Asterini and the order Asterades. Dahl Green, a Danish botanist, classified Astracy under the class Magnoliopsida, subclass Magnolidae, superorder Asterini and the order Asterades. Robert Thorne, very recently in the year 2003, an American taxonomist, classified Astracy under the class Angiospermi, subclass Asturidae, superorder Asturini and the order Asturades. Angiosperm phylogeny group, which is a collaborative group of taxonomists who have proposed a rankless classification. They have classified Astracy under the clade, under the broader clade of Eudicots, within which it has been classified under a subclade called as Eurozide second and the order Asturates. Now the third part of the lecture, phylogeny of Astracy. The Astracy forms an easily recognized group and both morphological and molecular data support its monophyletic origin. The family is believed to be closely related to families such as Campanulaceae, Cetalidaceae, Caliceraceae, Menentheaceae, and Goodiniaceae. The family Campanulaceae is the sister group to the clade containing Astraceae, Caliceraceae, Menentheaceae, and Goodiniaceae. Various biochemical and embryological features are useful in diagnosing these two clades. Number one, the Campanulaceae, and number second, Astraceae along with its sister families. Morphological analysis suggests that Caliceraceae is sister to Astraceae because both have flowers in densely clustered heads that are surrounded by an involucre of bracts. Here, the ovary is unilocular in both the cases and uniovulate, and they share an unusual kind of corolla veneation. Recent molecular studies based on RBCL and NDHF data suggest that Astraceae and Caliceraceae are sister families, whereas in contrast to the RBCL and NDHF data, RBCL together with ATPB and 18S ribosomal DNA data, these studies suggest that Caliceraceae and Goodiniaceae are sister taxa. Now, the analysis which were carried out both by combining morphological and molecular data, they strongly support that the Astraceae and Caliceraceae are sister families. The family Astraceae is broadly divided into several tribes that are often arranged in three main subfamilies. Number one, Barnadesoidae, 
which is a small South American group of mainly trees and shrubs. And this subfamily is characterized by a papillate style, lobed stigma, spiny sepsilla, and lack of chloroplast DNA inversion that is found in other two subfamilies. Number second subfamily is Chukoridae. This subfamily is characterized by sterile branches with the inner surface stigmatic. Heads here are discoid. And here we have the presence of risen ducts and lattice firs. The third subfamily and the most special subfamily in the family Astraceae is Asteroidae. This subfamily is characterized by the restriction of stigmatic tissue to two marginal lines on each style branch. Here we have the absence of lattice firs, but the presence of ray and disc florets and DNA characters also are unique to this subfamily asteroid. Some of the morphological features that are taxonomically useful at tribal level, as I have already mentioned that many classifications have uh, provided different tribal classification to the family Astraceae. That's why many morphological features have been found useful at the tribal level classification. Characteristics like style branches, wherein we have the characters like location of stigmatic surface, presence of hairs or appendage, length and width, and the apex form. All these characters of style branches, they have been used in the tribal classification. Also, the characters like Papus form, corolla shape, and anatomy. And also the pollen characters, the morphology of pollens, and the fruit characters, akin form, and the leaf arrangement have been prominently used in the tribal classification. Some of the genera in the family Astraceae, such as Ester, Crepus, Hierarchium, Draxicum, Tragopagon, they are taxonomically very difficult to delimit, especially at the species level. Why? Because we have the phenomenon like hybridization, polyploidy, and agamospermy in these genera very common. Now, the fourth part is the diversity of the family Astraceae. The Astraceae is the largest family of flowering plants in terms of number of species in the world. If we take the different families in the Angiospermus, Astraceae is number one in terms of its species richness. At present, the family is represented world over by about 1,500 genera with nearly 23,000 species. Some of the species rich genera in this family are Sinitio with about 1,250 species, Vernonia with about nearly 1,000 species, Caucinia 650 species, Eupitorium, 600 species. Centuria, 600 species. Artemisia, 550 species. Hierarchium, 500 species. Susuria, 300 species. Ester, the type genus, 180 species. And Solid Ego, 100 species. Members of this family, Astraceae, they show a cosmopolitan distribution. They, their distribution is worldwide but they are most diverse in the temperate and subtropical mountain regions and they are commonly grown in open and dry habitats. Now the last part of the lecture, that is the economic importance of the family Astraceae. The members of this family, they are of huge economic importance. The family contains many important food plants. These include Chicory. The scientific name is Cycorium or artichoke, the scientific name Cyneria, or the dandelion, the scientifically it is known as Tragsicum, or the common vegetable lettuce, scientifically known as Lactuca. Many members of this family, they are grown as source of oil seeds, such as the common sunflower, its scientific name is Helianthus anus. A natural red dye is obtained from the plant that belongs to Astraceae, sap flower. Its scientific name is Corthemus tinctorus. Perithrum, botanical name Chrysanthemum cinerifolium, or the fly bean, Polycaria, they are a source of natural insecticides. These two species, they are source of not chemical insecticides, but natural insecticides. 
the family Astraceae, it contains many celebrated ornamentals. We can name them like marigold, daisy, chrysanthemum, dahlia, gerbera, tagetus, zinnia, and many others, number of plants that are grown as ornamentals in our gardens and parks. Many members of this family, they have medicinal properties such as Artemisia. Many species of this genus Artemisia, they are world over used for their medicinal properties. Or we have the Susuria that is mostly confined to the Himalayan region. Many species of this genus Susuria, they are of huge medicinal importance. Some members of the family Astraceae, such as ragweed, scientifically known as ambrosia, it's a major cause of hay flower. Many species such as Parthenum hysterophorus, commonly known as carrot weed, or the Mycania micrantha, its common name is mile a minute weed. It is so notorious in its spread, that's why its common name is mile a minute weed. Then we have weeds like Ageratum conzites, Eupitorium, different species of Eupitorium species. They are world over known as obnoxious weeds and all these weeds they belong to family Astraceae. Dear students, with this we come to the end of today's lecture wherein we discuss it, the taxonomy and diversity of family Astraceae. We first of all discuss it, it is taxonomy, then its systematic position, then its uh, uh, diversity and lastly its economic importance. I hope you have enjoyed today's lecture. See you again with some another topic. Till then, bye bye.